Hey New Life, how you doing? I hope you're doing well today. We are gonna start off this Colossians series in Colossians 1, verse 24. If you'll join with me. Now I rejoice in what I am suffering for you. This is Paul speaking. And I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, which is the church. I have a question for you today. Have you ever heard the voice of God? Like, have you ever known confidently that God has asked you or or nudged you in a direction or called you to do something for Him? I was in college when this happened for me. I was a sophomore and I was playing baseball and going to school and had a part-time job. And I felt I was serving in the church and I was attending church regularly. And I felt like the Lord asked me or invited me into full-time ministry. I didn't know what it looked like other than the church I grew up in, there was a janitor and there was a preacher, and I didn't want either one of them. <laughs> I didn't want to do either. But ultimately, over the next few months and these next few years, as I began to serve in the church, doors began to open. And, and as I took a step of faithfulness each and every day, what I heard in my sophomore year of college, that original nudge or that calling of God, be- became, became a reality. What, what, I, what I once thought could happen began to happen. But since then, there's been so many things that have happened, different changes in that role within ministry, what ministry looked like, the hardships of, uh, of ministry, the, the emotional hardship, the, the mental challenges, the, the pain and loss, but also the highest of highs and preparing people for marriage and celebrating through wedding and discipling people one-on-one. There's been such great moments as well, but As we look at Paul in this verse of scripture, we see that he's in prison, writing to the church at Colossae. And what he's challenging them in is, hey, rejoice in your sufferings. Paul is saying, hey, even though I'm right here, I am going to rejoice. Why? Because I'm going to continue to build the church. And that's what God has me here for. This is the same man that months before was killing Christians, maybe a couple years before, was killing Christians. The people feared Paul because of what he had been doing, but now they're listening to him teach because God called him. God called him and what God calls you to, what God puts inside of you, that holy discontentment, that thing that you can't get off of your chest or your shoulders that God invites you into, he's going to open the doors, but then there's nothing that should be able to shake you from that calling in your life. You may have lost your edge. You may have, discouragement may have come upon you and it may be hard to think about what God has asked you to step into. But now is the time, church, to to rise up, to step back into what you know with all of your heart God called you into. Because none of our circumstances, whether hard nor good, should be able to shift or shake the calling of God on our life. All of us have the call and you may be asking, well, I don't feel called to ministry. I don't feel called to, to, to do it, lead a nonprofit or start whatever it may be. All of us are called to love the Lord with everything we've got and to serve those around us. What does God want you to step into? What is he calling you to do? And have you heard him ask you to do something before? And if not, I would encourage you, let's ask the Lord. Lord, what are you calling me into? What do you have for me in my life? What do you want me working wholeheartedly towards. All of us have the call to love God with all of our heart and to serve and love others. In Galatians 1, 15 and 16, but when God who set me apart from my mother's womb, this is Paul talking about when he was called by Jesus, who set me apart from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles. From that moment on, nothing was going to shake. It, could, it wouldn't be imprisonment. It couldn't be fear of man. It couldn't be the, the, the things that other people thought about him, the challenge that, that he would face, uh, being shipwrecked on an island. Whatever it may be, nothing was able to shake him from the calling that he had on his life. Question for you. In this present season, what do you believe God is calling you to do? Prioritize time in His Word, disciple your kids, serve in the church, join a life group, start a group with your friends for accountability or integrity, read through a book. 
give generously to your church, whatever it is, I'm asking you to go all in and let nothing shake you from what you know God is calling you into. And how do I apply this? What do I do leaving here today? What do we do? I would ask you to take a moment, pray, ask God to remind you of this, of this moment, of the moment that you were called. Let him encourage you in that when things get difficult. So what are we doing after today? Ask the Lord, Lord, what are you calling me into? And for those of you who have heard it and maybe been discouraged or lost heart, let's pray and ask the Lord, Lord, remind me of that moment because nothing should be able to shake us or shift us from the calling of God on our life as we see in Colossians 1, 24.